Welcome back. Are you ready to try something new? Well, in today's cooking corner, Market District Chef Ben D'Amico is here with a new way to prepare traditional beef burgers and meatloaf. I don't know how you did it, but somehow you made our set smell like we were cooking in the oven all day. It smells delicious. Wonderful to hear that. So I made uh, plant-based meatloaf. And so plant-based proteins are, are very popular, very trendy. They've come a long way in the past uh, even a couple years. Um, a lot more brands are out there. They've right. kind of almost perfected um, the way the texture is, the taste, uh, everything from snacks to sausages to burgers and just the straight up grounds are now available. Well, and I was just looking at what you have in there as we're getting ready to prepare our meatloaf and it looks like ground beef. I mean, there's no, it almost, you can't deny that it looks like it. Yes, the texture, the way the way it's been designed, it works very well. It, it holds up the same um, and it has that, that feel and that look. So it, they've done a great way mimicking uh, beef. So these are great alternatives. They're not necessarily healthier options. They're more, uh, if, if you want to go with a vegetarian lifestyle, maybe you want to try something different, uh, whatever your belief is that you want to try. These are just a great thing to try. I actually made this for Christmas. My brother's a vegetarian and this is the first time I really worked with this kind of stuff and it worked out really, really great. It, people that were not vegetarians love this. So loved it. So Okay, so what are we adding to uh, and, and what is this a mixture of? This is uh, well, it's it's actually pea protein based. All this stuff, you can look at the ingredients, they're all, all from peas. So this is derived from a pea process. I don't know how it happens, but yeah, it's made from plants. And how do they get the coloring then? Is uh, it just like a beet, dye? Yeah, it's, a, it's, uh, it's fruit juices. Wow. They use beet juices and stuff from what, from what I've researched. But yeah, you can look at the back of the package, find out exactly what's in everything. Okay. So we have uh, two packages, 24 ounces of the plant-based meats. I use the awesome grounds. Um, and, and to this meatloaf, we're gonna actually Add in a lot of vegetables. Okay. Um, and uh, this grows great with turkey or meat, beef if you want to too, so you don't just have to use this recipe for uh, the vegetables. So what I have here, and I, I like to puree this, I don't really see, like to see the chunks in it. Okay. So this is green bell pepper. Okay. Some onion. And how much are we talking this about? This is about a fourth of a cup, half a cup of each, um, okay. once it's ground down. Some carrot, celery, and this is cooked mushrooms. These are cremini mushrooms. You can okay. white, white, white button mushrooms. These actually go great in burgers too. If you add, it actually gives you that like umami kind of flavor and it gives a little extra texture to it. So there I have some mushrooms. And then I'm gonna add in breadcrumbs. These are panko breadcrumbs. I have a bunch of seasonings. It's parsley, oregano, uh, chipotle powder, chili powder, cumin, coriander, salt and pepper. And at home we will have this all posted at pittsburghstatelive.com so you can yes, get the ratios of all of that. And then Dijon mustard. Mm. And so I'm not adding any egg because you don't really need a binder because this meat works really, really well without a binder. Oh, I was going to ask you that because typically when you have something that has vegetables in it, it can be a little, th there can be a lot of moisture in it. And to this, we're adding a lot of, a lot more moisture we're adding, with the yes. vegetables. So this, I didn't add any liquid. I didn't add any egg, but this will help the panko kind of bind up. Okay. And the way the meat is, you will feel a difference when you're, if you're used to using regular ground beef. Um, you just want to mix it together until it's kind of really incorporated. You don't want to overmix. Same with any kind of meat or any kind of uh, ground product you're using. You really don't want to overmix the meat because it tends to make it kind of more tough, right. especially when you bake it. So this is very dense product. You just want to kind of give it a quick mix and then into a sprayed baking pan. I, you can freeform. Uh, my wife likes to freeform her meat. I really like to use it into kind of a uniform look. Okay. Um, I think it actually cooks a little better too. And then we will pop this in an oven. This is the husband and wife just debate in your yeah, house? Yeah, it depends on who's making the, <laughs> the, the food that day. There's certain, <laughs> certain differences. Um, this will go in the oven for at 350 for about uh, an hour and a half. Okay. And then you want to keep it covered with aluminum foil, take it out. And you were going to put the glaze on we're it. We're going to make a glaze. And yes. That, does that go on before baking? I like or to you... take it. So about 15 minutes after you take off the wrapping, I like to flip it, invert it onto a, a parchment lined paper, um, put it back in the oven for about 15 minutes. Oh, okay. And that'll kind of seal the glaze. So this glaze is very simple. This works great for a lot of things. Great, it's great on chicken too. Ketchup. Okay. It's Heinz, of course. And Good for you, you some, Ben. <laughs> barbecue, no question. <laughs> barbecue sauce. Okay. And these are equal amounts. Uh, Dijon mustard. And the last is brown sugar. Got to get some brown sugar. Well, actually, there. it's not the last ingredient because this is something I found that works really well. Um, this is Dave's, in, uh, Dave's Gourmet Creamy Red Pepper Sauce, and it's, it's got a smoky kind of uh, creamy, just awesome flavor. Wow. And it really takes it to a whole new level. You really like that stuff. I really, <laughs> yeah, I like it because it gets it, um, it kind of turns it a little more. Whoa. Now you can see what it looks like. <laughs> 
<laughs> so it just gets a quick mix. You can you can bake this um, again. Goes great as a glaze for other items as well. Awesome. And we're gonna drizzle this on our meatloaf. So since our and kitchen is, is under construction, this is our this is what we have meatloaf. And usually I just like to do just like a little drizzle. A little drizzle, yeah. That's great. And this is this is I, I'm telling you what I am I'm personally not a vegetarian, but this meatloaf was amazing. Okay. Uh, not to toot my own horn, but if you want to give it a try, I do want to try um, it. It has a great texture. It does have a lot of that uh, kind of extra flavor because we added the vegetables and all the spices. Right. Um, so my wife's like, isn't meatloaf just like onions and salt and pepper and ground beef? I'm like, yeah, but when you do this, it just takes it to a whole new level. It does taint change the color a little bit because of the carrots. Wow. But it's 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 got some great. Kind of potency to that. That, that pop is delicious, of flavor. Ben. Delicious. Thank you. And you said Giant Eagle Market District offers a lot of stuff if you're in the market for. Yeah, plant based from snacks to, to sausages to ground beef. They're in the meat department produce. You'll find it throughout the store. Just uh, we're, we're on the trend for plant based. You for may the have new just year. converted me. I'm not sure if that's <laughs> delicious. Our thanks to Giant Eagle for sponsoring the Cooking Corner here on PTL and providing today's yummy uh, cake to celebrate our Facebook milestone. Sorry, I'll get it out. Look for a copy of today's recipes at PittsburghTodayLive.com. Ben shares them with us there. Well, up next, events that you don't want to miss this winter and advice on badly behaving boyfriends. We asked Natalie about that when she joins us in the studio, and I know she wants this recipe too. Then later, we ask you, what's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Mine? Thin Mints. But there's big news about this year's cookie sale. The news just released today when PTL comes right back.